Hey, right on. Oh, hey, is this thing on? Oh. What up, 475, Raj here. Pardon the mask, having to go a little incognito, Richie style. Had a little issue over in uh, Butte for St. Patty's Day. Can't tell you a whole lot about it, other than it involved a lot of whiskey and a few farm animals. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. All right, once again, uh, I'm having to go low profile here because I got Johnny Lie after me, but uh, I'll get out of it. Trust me, I'll get out of it. Uh, but for now, just going to be on the down low, hanging out in Palmer's office. He's never in here, so there's minimal risk of getting caught. And he has tasked me out with taking you through the performance enhancement lecture, something that he felt I was imminently qualified to cover for you. Uh, so what the hell, I'm going to give it my best shot and uh, we'll go from there. So the kind of idea is here that at some point you would have watched that uh, bigger, stronger, faster documentary that Palmer told you about being on Netflix. So uh, either before or after whatever, yeah, watch that video and then tie that in with uh, this little guest lecture that I'm doing. And then you'll, uh, you'll look at the PowerPoint that's up on Moodle and that'll kind of, uh, I'll kind of talk my way through that. So listen to this lecture and then at the same time have printed out those lecture notes or whatever for the performance enhancement uh, guest lecture Raj style and it'll all kind of sync up. So uh, you'll see on there Lance Armstrong, right? What do you think about that guy? Write down one word that, that, that you think best describes Lance Armstrong. Ready, set, go. All right, what'd you come up with? Cheater, liar, doper, you know? Hey, but how about philanthropist? I mean, you know, that guy's given like 325 million bucks or something he's raised uh, through Livestrong that he's helping cancer patients with. So, you know, Palmer's always harping about utilitarian ethics, greatest good for the greatest number. Say what you want about that dude, right? But he is, uh, he's raised a lot of money and helped a lot of people. Oh, sorry. I had a couple of pork chops for dinner. Uh, you know, that guy is that guy's helped a lot of people. So, you know, love him or hate him, whatever. Uh, he's uh, he's a pretty interesting cat. And then on the next slide, right, you see all those people on there. Some of them athletes, some of them old men, some of them actors, you know, some of them musicians, some of them young students or whatever, right? Performance enhancement drugs and beyond. The kind of idea is, I know that uh, that what Palmer's harping at about all this is that it's a it's an issue that's way more uh, complicated and goes way deeper than just something that pertains to professional athletes. Uh, it's like all of us are trying to enhance our performance in some way or other. Uh, so you look at the next slide where it says just that the human fascination with better performance, right? Maybe it's a uh, five-hour energy to get yourself all jacked up a little bit or maybe it's a smoky treat with Barry or you know a couple of extends to put a couple inches on Jimmy or you know maybe you're wanting to get all swole at the gym so you're packing in that creatine like uh, like who knows what you know macking that stuff down trying to get all swole so whatever it is almost all of us even if it's just three or four cups of coffee to get going in the morning right we're working we're trying to better our performance all the time. But when athletes start doing it, as they pointed out in the documentary, all of a sudden it becomes taboo or, or something that's off limits. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. Uh, and that's part of the part of the discussion here. So uh, from a historical standpoint, there's a slide that says history. Uh, people have been trying to tweak their performance as long as humans have been upright, you know, like the earliest testicle festival we thought it was we thought rock creek had the market cornered on that well geez eighth century bc we had olympians eating sheep nuts you know trying to trying to get better at what they do and then bicyclists you know they've been involved in stuff for as long as we know about so there's a pretty lengthy history with regard to humans trying to uh better their performance initially it was to try and kill each other and now it's kind of morphed into more sporting uh, arenas, but whatever. Again, something that we've been doing for a long time or trying to do. So when we talk about it, uh, ergogenic AIDS, that's the slide, slide number seven. 
which is any practice device or substance that enhances a person's ability for energy use, production, or recovery, you know, that leaves it pretty wide open. So if you go to the next slide then, uh, and they start talking about types of ergogenic aids, well, you know, the ones that get the most attention are the pharmacological ones. But if we're using that definition, that just about anything fits under that, right? So if we're talking mechanical ergogenic aids, that can be pressing some weights in the gym or, or putting a nasal strip across your nose or using a polar heart rate monitor or whatever it is, right? That's mechanical ergogenic aid. Maybe it's psychological. Maybe it's jamming out with your beats by Dr. Dre and listening to some hip hop, you know, whatever it is, whatever floats your boat. That's an ergogenic aid. Maybe you're using an ice pack or a whirlpool or whatever. That fits the definition too. And then obviously the pharmacological agents are the ones that seem to get the most attention. Uh, but those are really complex, right? You can have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and maybe there's some caffeine in there that gets you a little wound up. But maybe it's something as complicated as EPO or, or HGH or LDS or, you know, whatever it is that you're thinking about that... Uh, that get you all worked up. So even the pharmacological agents range from pretty simple to really, really complex. So then we think about the legality of the usage. Well, again, there's some websites there listed for the World Anti-Doping Agency or whatever. Uh, man, you can want to get confused real quick. Try reading through that thing and what's banned and all of that. I mean, holy crap, that list changes all the time and you can't even pronounce most of the things that are in there. So how the hell is an athlete supposed to know uh, that something is banned? Well, they should know, right? Because it's right there in the book. But if we start talking about the legality, it gets pretty complicated pretty fast. And then different organizations have their own lists, right? So WADA has their list. The professional leagues have their own lists. The NCAA has its list. So... Uh, you know, caffeine is banned. Well, it's banned at certain limits, right? Well, what's that limit? Well, I'm not sure what that limit is. It depends on how much you have. So, again, just something like that where it's, it gets gray. It's not necessarily black and white. So that complicates it just from a legality standpoint. You look at the slide, right? The big challenge. Well, the big challenge is technology is always going to be ahead of the policies, rules, and enforcement. There's always going to be somebody more motivated to come up with something new uh, and something undetectable or something legal according to the rules, uh, even though it might not technically be okay or allowed, right? So that that technology is always going to be ahead of the enforcement, which just means it's going to be difficult to, to try and catch folks. Right in the 70s, Sports Illustrated, the magazine, had this really fascinating little survey of looking, uh, talking with Olympic athletes and they posed him this question, if you knew that taking a drug would ensure that you win a gold medal, but it would also uh, be guaranteed to kill you within five years, would you do it? Well, over 50% of those chumps said yes. You know, what are they thinking? It's like, oh, okay, here's your gold medal. We'll start digging your grave now, fool. Uh, but like over half of them said, yeah, I'll take the gold medal even if I'm dead in five years. So that, I guess, if nothing else, just shows you how motivated some of these folks are to uh, bend or even break the rules for uh, for some short-term glory. So how hard is it going to be to stop them if people are willing to die, basically, uh, to get ahead? Well, it's going to be pretty darn hard indeed, right? All right, what else do we got? Well, time for the why question, the morals and ethics of usage. Why are people using? Well, right, there's no easy answer to that. They're using for all sorts of different reasons, as was pretty apparent in... Uh, bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, so again, keep keep that question in mind as you're watching through that uh, that documentary, or or th if you've watched it already, think about that question. Why were these people doing what they were doing? What was what was driving them to make some of the choices they made? All right, and the, and the deal is it's just not going to stop at performance-enhancing drugs. It, as technology advances, at some point. Uh, like, again, they talked about in the documentary, we're going to be making genetic modifications uh, so people can tweak their bodies at the genetic level. Or if, sure, you maybe you blow your ACL out, you just go and get a some customizable uh, new and improved bionic ACL or, 
you get super acute hearing or super uh, superhuman vision, whatever that might be, and you're a baseball player, a ski racer, that sure is heck going to help you, right? You didn't take any drugs to get that. You just did some surgery or had some implant or whatever. Uh, because that's the way we're headed, right? At some point, it's not going to be a pharmacological debate anymore. It's going to be a debate about these next layers or levels of technology that are allowing some athletes uh, to better themselves through these means and where others won't be able to, and then it's just going to be inherently unfair. Uh, so, you know, you'd think we'd try and figure out a way to fix it now, but we haven't seemed to have done that yet. So what do we do about it, right? Possible courses of action. Well, we could eliminate testing altogether. Just say, you know what? We're not doing a very good job of trying to catch everybody or stop them. So let's just let people use if they want to use and, and not use if they don't want to. Kind of what uh, bodybuilding seems to have done, which is they have uh, you know, all natural categories and then they have the open categories which basically means I, I assume you can be on anything you want because we're not testing so maybe we go that route across the board all sports whatever just say you know what use if you want to use use at your own risk uh, and then everybody's competing knowing that's the deal or we go the other way and just spend a whole bunch of money on figuring out some more effective testing instruments and then we give people one strike and you're out t types of punishments instead of these first warning, second warning, third offense, and so on. Uh, just kick them out the first time they get caught so they know, all right, if I'm going to cheat and I get caught, I'm probably done for life. Uh, so that might be an option. And then the third option might be uh, attack it from an educational and a role model and an environmental standpoint where just help people understand the morals and the ethics of trying to compete fair and trying to compete clean. And hopefully those three look familiar, right? Because that's just Moulton's continuum that Palmer's always harping about. Uh, free choice or free will, right? That lines up with just eliminate testing and let people use whatever they want. Positive law lines up with uh, making better testing and, and increasing uh, the harshness of punishments, right? And then ethics or manners in the middle is just saying, hey, you know, teach people about being fair and competing clean and, and trying to level the playing field that way and hope that ethics and manners take care of it. Uh, but again, we know that that can be super challenging in a lot of ways. So but we just don't seem to be getting it handled with our current approach. We're just kind of nibbling at the edges and we don't really seem to be stopping the problem. So uh, food for thought, right? And then WGF, who gives a, mm, eh, I can't beep anything out here, so I won't even say that, but you know what I'm talking about. Why even bother? Why are we talking about performance enhancing drugs and substances? I mean, what's it really matter? Well, right, as Palmer harps about and as the documentary harps about, it's, it's way bigger than sports, right? For some reason, we don't think sports heroes should do it. Uh, but we're okay with everybody else doing it, whether it's musicians or fighter pilots or students. Uh, why, why the difference? Why is it frowned upon for athletes and generally accepted for everybody else? So that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. We should be more consistent. Uh, because like I said at the beginning, everybody's seemingly trying to tweak their performance in some way. Uh, and maybe it just boils down to a cost benefit, right, of, of saying, okay, as Yasalis pointed out, Dr. Chuck Yasalis pointed out in the documentary, every drug, every drug has a cost benefit uh, associated with it, even aspirin, right? There's a, there's a benefit to taking any drug, but every drug also comes with side effects or a potential cost. And so maybe it's a matter of, of increasing research, doing a better job of having a better understanding of what some of these things do. And then just educating users to say, hey, if you're willing to, uh, to deal with the costs of this particular drug, long-term usage of it, uh, and, and the benefits are important enough to you to get, well, knock yourself out. Go for it. Uh, but that just isn't somewhere we seem to have uh, gotten to yet. All right, and then the last slide is questions. Really hard for me to answer any questions because I can't see you. Only you can see me, right? Uh, so that's a little bit of a problem. you got questions, as usual, email Palmer. He'll do his best to confuse you even more knowing that dude. 
You know, I hack on Palmer. He's a pretty good dude, though, really, right? He's, he's helped bail me out a few times, right? If you haven't figured out yet, he's, uh, he's a pretty merciful cat. So uh, I like to hack on him, but he's cool. So uh, you know what? Enjoy spring break. Uh, be cool. And, uh, and I'm sure Palmer will tap into me again, and I'll catch you on the flip side, 475. Raj out.